national emergency. The new stay at home order. We will shut you down. Don't think you can get on a plane or a train. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And we will take you to jail. We've got to get them vaccinated. Or we will keep you in a facility longer. As the world was descending into synchronized tyranny, I began to ask myself, how did they get everyone to go along with this? Oh, it feels so good. I know. Obsessed with finding the answer, I began studying every moment in recorded history where masses of people acted against their own self-interest. The only mechanism that could explain what was happening in society. Screw your freedom, you're a schmuck. They were telling us this whole time. Remember the movie 2012? It was released in 2009. The biggest interruptions in human history, causing the highest neutrino count we've ever recorded. That's not what worries me, Asia. For the first time ever, the neutrinos are causing a physical reaction. That's impossible. So I want you to notice that he's looking at you like he's telling you something, like he's got a message for you, all right? Just look at him. Right. He's looking at you like he's got a message for you, like he's telling you something. Even the one on top of the washing machine, he's looking down at you. And then when the camera pans... I'm doing all this other stuff, and I never even went back and read them. So I was totally amazed to find out this prophecy of a first wave of ascension, that it was going to happen by mid-2025. Uh, and that there is going to be, as I just said, a full solar flash, but only after everybody's ready for it. Think about it. So some of us are going to be able to go right into that higher astral body and be ready for the full-blown fourth density right away uh, after this first wave happens. So apparently there will be some people who become incredible superheroes right off the bat. And this could involve telekinesis, this could involve telepathy, this could involve shooting lightning out of your hands, uh, balls of light out of your hands. All these kinds of interesting things appear to be some of the basic stuff. The ability to project thought forms, to project complex visual thought forms. Let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. You're not human, are you? Well, it's tough to get any more obvious than that. If I had to guess, I'd say you were programmed from the machine world. So is he. So far, so good. But if that's true, that could mean you are part of this system. Another kind of control. Keep going. I suppose the most obvious question is, how can I trust you? Bingo. Not like me, but... Look, see those spirits? At some point, a program was written to govern them. A program was written to watch over the trees and the wind, sunrise and sunset. That program's running all over the place. The ones doing their job, doing what they were meant to do, are invisible. You never even know they were here. But the other ones, well, you hear about them all the time. I've never heard of them. Of course you have. I don't know what happens when you go down the conspiracy theory rabbit holes. You find out some stuff that's really grieving. They've had free electricity for over a hundred years and haven't told people because they've suppressed it. They've, the government has literally captured the patents so that other people can't reproduce it. <laughs> it's, it's that bad. Once you learn the political corruption, you start going, well, what else? It never ends. Like if you knew that there's medicine that doesn't have side effects that can actually heal you, you would no longer be a customer. If you knew that there's free electricity, you would no longer be a customer. If you knew that certain foods are poisoning you and causing you to get on the hamster wheel of needing medication that doesn't actually heal you, it would, that you would no longer be a customer. Everything is about sucking stuff out of you. You know the movie The Matrix where everybody's hooked up to thing, bro? Like, I'm not trying to be crazy. I'm not trying to be crazy, bro, but like, it is kind of like that. Like, the more I look, it's everywhere, bro. Once you start to see 
the fence around you everywhere that they've built so that you can only go so far, you start to realize that it truly is a prison planet. Welcome back to the coolest channel on YouTube. Man, look, welcome back to the OG family. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Let's get this video right here to like 20,000 likes, y'all. I know we can do that. But look, uh, this is one of those ones, people. You know what I'm saying? Look, watch the video from the beginning to the end because you'll miss something. And look, breaking them ankles once again, you'll have to be lost in the sauce. You know what I'm saying? But look, make sure y'all smash that like button, share with your friends and your family. Just know if you're going through a tough time out here, we're going through this thing called life together. You're never in it by yourself. Good vibes only. Y'all know how we do around here. Don't believe anything you see you see or hear in these videos. Make sure you always going out here doing your own research because you are your own creator and you you determine what's real and what means something to you or not but look let's vibe out let's get into this video breaking news the president declaring a national emergency the new stay at home order we will shut you down don't think you can get on a plane or a train this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated and we will take you to jail we've got to get them vaccinated or we will keep you in a facility longer as the world was descending into synchronized tyranny I began to ask myself, how did they get everyone to go along with this? Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> Obsessed with finding the answer, I began studying every moment in recorded history where masses of people acted against their own self-interest. The only mechanism that could explain what was happening in society, screw your freedom, you're a schmuck, was what is usually referred to as mass formation. We are now with an economy in crisis, but with an incredible opportunity. Unprecedented opportunity for a reset. Your Royal Highnesses, distinguished heads of state and government, the future is built by us. We need a great reset. When they say you'll be happy, what they mean is you'll be enslaved. Today, we have the technology to hack human beings on a massive scale. Who master those technologies will be the master of the world. Those who control the data control the future, not just of humanity, but the future of life itself. Every aspect of our life has been infiltrated by people that do not have our best interests at heart. There are forces using fear and isolation to induce mass psychosis. I don't want you to be hopeful. Environmental doom. Fires. I want you to panic. Storms. It will kill your children. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. People are starting to wake up. They're starting to wake across the world. I'm seeing people come together from all walks of life, finally saying enough is enough. We didn't come here for no reason. We have a voice and we're here to share it. We have to be the solution. We cannot rely on the media, the president, or whoever to fix these problems. I would rather pick up cans on the side of the highway than to live out of alignment with my truth. We're all being driven back to the dream. As you see in the audience, Democrats, Republicans, white, Black, everyone all in between. This is the example that they do not want to see, but they have no choice. The masses of humanity have been slapped awake. Open your eyes. It's time to wake up. This is the Great Awakening. People cannot go back into the Matrix now. A lot of people are trying to. They can't. Psst, pass it on. Have y'all seen Andre 3000's new promo video for a GQ? So I want you to notice that he's looking at you like he's telling you something, like he's got a message for you, all right? Just look at him. Right. He's looking at you like he's got a message for you, like he's telling you something. Even the one on top of the washing machine, he's looking down at you. And then when the camera pans in, when the camera pans in into the washer, he leans down like he's literally trying to tell you something. Watch him. Watch him. You see? All right, so what are they telling you? 
let's dissect this let's get it thank you to tiktok for bringing back 10 minute videos first off all right so we are all aware that we're in a matrix we are in a game okay and the game has rules and the game is also fixed okay meaning we've done this over and over and over again hence why he's at a laundromat right he's in a cycle he's, he's got a cycle going right pun intended or no pun intended the way that you can look at it so since we know the game is fixed so there are messages that the game carries and everything is literally a message uh, literally everything so who are they talking about here okay andre okay let's dissect the name so we can look at it many ways we have and ray okay a ray is a light right the light is the sun okay or an ra which is again the sun and ra because a e i o u are the same thing zero is not a number so you have three okay and raw three which is the three strand dna that we've been talking about right this is our quote unquote junk dna unlocking and it says is back with the exclamation point and then it says he brought back his flu we're gonna look this later okay but i want you to look at the number three right here literally telling you right your three strand dna is being cleaned okay it shows you that your three strand DNA is being cleaned so much so that they put Andre, your DNA, right? And Ray DNA inside of the washer being clean. You see, stick with me, y'all. And we're going to break it down using numerology. All right. Because everything is numbers. We are literal walking numbers. And if you know numbers, you can decode things. Now to go even deeper, you see three washers here, right? He is specifically on top of this one, which is the white sun. If you look at it. And then you go over here, you see the black one, the black sun, which is the yin and the yang, right? So this is a flip, literal, a total flip. Because if you look at GQ, it looks like an eight, doesn't it? The G and the Q looks like an eight together because what that's what the timeline about. Escaping the matrix, escaping the matrix. So let's get to the numbers, y'all. So who is presenting this? We see GQ is the one that is presenting this. So we all know the 3D matrix is breaking down and we're going to the fifth dimension, okay? Which is the heart chakra. So that would be the fourth chakra, four, right? Now for the people who really know Gematria and who've been following me, look what it also means in the Kabbalah, 42. Now said, if you know about the number 42, nothing else needs to be said. You also have four plus two gives you six. And since we are in the upside down, right? That gives you a nine, you flip that. So the six and the nine. The six and the nine, the yin and the yang, the white and the black sun. So our DNA, our three strand DNA is being cleansed by the white and the black sun because it's coming back. You see? All right. Now to further prove my point, he is playing what's called a flute. Okay. Now the word flute in numerology gives you 26. And guess what else gives you 26? Cleaning gives you 26. Cleaning gives you 26. And what is this? What is this, y'all? What is it doing? It's actually it's cleaning, isn't it? It's cleaning. Now this says out of order. Sorry. Okay. Now back to Andre. Let's see what Andre represent. Andre gives me 17 in Chaldean. One plus seven is eight. Again, eight breaking out the matrix, the time loop. Guess what else gives me 17? Heart. The heart of the earth, right? Also, again, because heart is an anagram for earth. Earth gives you 17, right? Which has to do with the heart chakra. Earth is an anagram for heart, y'all. Andre represents the heart of the earth. Now, no coincidence as to why we're witnessing to things like this. Oh, shit. All right. As to why we're witnessing things like this. This is the earth speaking. This is the heart speaking. She is playing her flute. I told y'all, these are like angels, don't they? They look like angels, right? As to why we're experiencing things like this. Which is actually why the earthquake happened in Iceland. You see, you know, cause we were in ice, right? We were in the tundra. Things like this. Oh my God. When have we ever been witnessing things like this, y'all? Oh. This is the earth speaking. This is the heart speaking. They want to tell you this is uh, their technology. No, y'all. The earth is alive. She's coming back alive. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, that's some powerful energy right there. If you know, you know. Our DNA is cleansing. Oh, my God. I need to get the other camera. Now, let's get a little deeper. 
Because if you look at the washer here, it says 22 and then 3. Now, 22 is actually 2 plus 2, and that gives you, again, 4, which is your heart chakra. 22 is also a master number. It is becoming the architect, the magnet. And then you have the 3 for the Holy Trinity, meaning that the Holy Trinity is bringing out the mastery within you, the architect, the creator. Now, the reason why that's important is because the three is on the right hand side and the 22 is on the left hand side. Now, we all know that the right hand side feeds the left hand side right over here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this side feeds this side. So the feminine side feeds the masculine side because women feed men, not the other way around. So literally the mother is feeding you. The mother is feeding, which is literally the three sons. You have the three and the 22. Now, let's take it a little further. You have the K on this machine, right? K is the 11th letter in the alphabet. 11 is a portal. So now let's put that 11 with that 22. You get 33. 333, three, 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 right? Christ consciousness, which is what's happening right now. Our DNA is being cleaned to attain Christ consciousness. You guys feel it. Y'all see the shift. Y'all feel the shift, or I should say. Now let's look at what our DNA is being cleaned with. Now, if you look at this detergent over here, it says so fresh, so clean. And so fresh, so clean gives me 60 and zero is not a number. So it's just literally six. Now, again, we are in the upside down. You flip that, you get a nine, the six and the nine. Look, y'all, the three, the six and the nine, three, six, nine. This is what Nikola Tesla was talking about. Let's look at what so fresh, so clean means. So this gives me 60. Now we drop the zero and this gives us six, which has to do with your third eye, right? Which is who you are, your identity. This is where your soul resides, your light body, because it's what the Holy Trinity is activating. Your left, your right brain, and your pineal gland, which is Isis, Ra, and El, which is why all this stuff is going on with, you know, Israel. It's all a distraction. So let's look at what 60 gives us. This gives us neodymium, y'all, neodymium. Neodymium is the 144, as you can see over here, right? You have the six, flip it, that's a nine. Neo is literally telling you about Neo, becoming Neo. We are becoming Neo. And if you don't know what Neodymium magnets are, they are the Earth's most rarest and strongest magnets. And what are we, y'all? We are electromagnetic beings. So the magnetism is coming back to us, y'all, which is the heart, which is literally the heart, y'all. So this is the message that Andre is sending us because, again, these videos don't go viral for no reason. They go viral because they, these are messages that the Matrix is sending us, that the Mother is sending us, that the Earth is sending us, that the Heart is sending us. All right, y'all. That's what Andre represents, y'all. So let me know what y'all think, y'all. Leave your comments down below. Share, like, and follow for more. Please share this video for real, y'all. All right? Let's get this shit. Peace out. I ain't gonna hold you. You body that. You know what I'm saying? You body that. Hit that one right on the head for me. Tell me how y'all feel about that one. Did it was that like that was like one of the best breakdowns I've seen. Name some some other ones if if, if y'all know, but that that right there is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Just think about it though. Just think about it and pay attention to what's to come. I.e. these next clips. Watch this. By mid-2025. Now again. I had no idea about this. I didn't talk about this in previous videos because I never went back and read these books that I'd written. I just dictated them and then kind of, I was su such a workaholic, I just kept on going with the rest of my life and doing all this other stuff. And I never even went back and read them. So I was totally amazed to find out this prophecy of a first wave of ascension, that it was going to happen by mid-2025. Uh, and that there is going to be, as I just said, a full solar flash but only after everybody's ready for it. Think about it. So some of us are going to be able to go right into that higher astral body and be ready for the full-blown fourth density right away uh, after this first wave happens. So apparently there will be some people who become incredible superheroes right off the bat. And... This could involve telekinesis, this could involve telepathy, this could involve shooting lightning out of your hands, uh, balls of light out of your hands. All these kinds of interesting things appear to be some of the basic stuff. The ability to project thought forms, to project complex visual thought forms. And again, by location. 
projecting your own essence into your fourth density body. And that's what we're all going to have to learn how to do. And once we're all finished with that, then there is a full solar flash because now everybody has, has walked into fourth density and everybody's walked off the stage of the earth. There's no need to be there anymore. We've all learned how to activate our astral bodies. We go into this new layer of existence and only then is there the full solar flash. Now the Law of One actually talks about all this stuff and they estimate in the books that it's going to take somewhere between 100 to 700 years before this happens. Now, in the meantime, once we go through this first wave of ascension, we all get something that they describe extensively in the Law of One. You can go look it up or read Michael Prophecies again, where they talk about the third, fourth activated body. What the hell is the third, fourth activated body? The third, fourth activated body means that you live in a human body, you still have your body, but you also have your fourth density body activated enough that now it can do things like poltergeist events. It might start causing telekinesis to occur, and at first you don't realize that you are causing it, but it's this other version of you that would be like a ghost that lives at the same time as you are living. So you're interconnected with this consciousness, and it can actually go and move things without your awareness. And so... If you look at the, all the teachings of the classic ancient master yogis, they all talk about the importance of raising your consciousness and it eventually gets to the point where people are having lucid dreams, out-of-body experiences, and in the case of Levitating Saints, we talk about this in, in our new movie, Levitation. I hope you'll see that coming up. Levitation is going to be incredible. We have all these great stars we're interviewing for this, insiders. So when we see what's possible it becomes an amazing phenomenon. They were telling us this whole time. Remember the movie 2012? It was released in 2009. The heating of the Earth's core will suddenly act like microwaves. Acting like microwaves. Do y'all understand what microwaves can do to you? Like... I want no smoke with that. If it's... As promised, no speech. Split down the middle like a damn hot dog. That's what I wanted to say, but look. <laughs> I don't want to scare some of y'all, but that's, that's crazy. But I'm just playing, y'all. I'm just playing. Just joking. Just joking. You're not going to split down the middle. You might split down the back. <laughs> Think about it, y'all. Crazy. Keep watching. ...of the video, he shows a CD or a disc. He immediately draws the geometric shape of an oblate spheroid. We can see how he separates the oblate spheroid with a disc that has a hole in the center. Then, below, he draws a circle immediately paints it completely black. From this black circle rays come out and three rays pass through the hole in the center. At the bottom, that's the black sun. Below, he writes, still. One of the possible meanings of this black circle may be the black sun. He draws reliefs on the edge of the hole and writes North Pole. And above this hole, inside what would be the celestial vault, he draws a star, the polar star or Polaris. He marks two points and connects them in a circle and writes, Equator. He draws two lines that go down from the polar star to the two points. The lines form a triangle. He highlights two of the rays coming out of the black sun and also forms a triangle but vice versa. I get it. And he writes, as above, so below. It's one of the seven principles of Hermes Trismegistus. It appears on the Emerald Tablet and then in the Kabbalion. He erases the intersections and draws the sun and moon.
and he makes a gesture of rotation. He draws two arrows to show the distance of the moon and the sun. Both are 3,300 miles or 5,310 kilometers away. Then he measures the diameter of the sun and moon, being the same with a diameter of 32 miles or 51 kilometers. He draws continents on the surface and on the other side as well. He points both sides and writes, same. Below he writes summer land. He draws rays coming out of the black sun and writes, northern lights. The center of the drawing is equal to the mason symbol, which is a square and a compass. He points out the ray coming out of the black sun toward the moon and then he erases the face of the moon. He makes signs explaining that the sun doesn't light up the moon. Who does it is the black sun. Hey, look, we knew the moon was up there doing some unmoonly shit. Like, it's getting help from something. You feel me? Like, look, the other stuff that, that we was talking, I don't believe that at all. You feel me? It just never made sense to me. Like, me, I'm one of those people. I question everything. Might not be outwardly all the time. I, I, I was just keeping it to myself coming up because I just knew it was bullshit. That's why I never liked school like that. I was just at school to get some, well, chase them sugar walls and to uh you know just get good enough grades so my parents didn't go to jail they could like that's all i did but i i had no interest in it. i knew i wasn't it was a backup plan i was gonna become a doctor but you know if everything else failed i would just go ahead and get it out of the way that's something that you know you can survive on and stuff that's why i was on mentally at the time but i don't know how i got there but yeah yeah is the math math for y'all <laughs> all right bet. let me know in the comments down below Listen to what this 102 year old lady said. Today? 102. 102. So you were born in? 1918. 1918. And um, we were just talking and I asked you what, what shape the earth is. And what did you say? What were you taught in school when I in elementary school? I was taught in school that the earth was flat. And what do you do for a living? I jump out of planes, skydive for a living. When you jump out the plane, how high is the plane in the air? 17,000 feet. So from 17,000 feet in the air when you jump out, do you see the curvature of the earth or does it look flat? You do not see the curvature of the earth. All you see is just everything that you can pretty much see for 100 miles or so. There was all that. We've got to get all these medieval ideas out of your head. 
clear the way for new ideas, knowledge of man's fabulous discoveries in the centuries ahead. Now that'll be a great advantage for him. An advantage indeed. <laughs> if the boy goes about saying the world is round, they'll take him for a lunatic. The world is round? Yes, yes, that's right. And it also uh, goes a round. <laughs> You got to think, though, like, you know, you've been indoctrinated to think one thing. So sometimes it's hard to believe, like, you know, that 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 matrix syndrome that I call it. I call it the matrix syndrome. Like when you're trying to break away from the matrix and then it, it seems like the agent is still trying to keep you there. Like, hey, nigga, where you going? You know, we got to keep thinking that this shit is, uh, you know, what I'm saying circle. But, you know, at the same time, when you start to really see it for what it is and why they say we can't go back to the moon all of a sudden. But we had the technology a long time ago. You feel me? Like, I, it's just, the math just don't be mathing people. So, you know, this is just something to look at. I'm not saying believe this stuff. Do what you want to do, but I know it makes sense to me. But you see how easy it is to indoctrinate somebody to get them away from, you know, the truth. They taught this stuff when you were at school, you know, and your parents didn't know everything that they was teaching you. See, they were taught something. And then they was taught something else. It's easy to hide the truth in, you know, uh, in these school systems. That's why it's treated like a jail. And, you know, and they got you in these small cubicles and small little desks. And they, they make you learn this information that's not true on purpose so they can get you in a rat race, get you not thinking for yourselves and depending on them. And, you know, you think that is like what life is supposed to be. But whatever. Nationally kept secrets. Um, would shatter most people's imagination of what is possible. This is probably one of the more well-known black budget time travel projects, with the exception of the Montauk project. Many whistleblowers have said that the program was not actually shut down, but just classified into deep black the people that know everything about looking glass that have gotten all the reports and all the information the elites of the world probably figured out that that was the end of the game and nothing could be manipulated beyond that point according to the alleged insiders the looking glass technology was apparently used to look backward and forward in time using the consciousness of an operator as a type of steering mechanism. The operator would sit in a chair that was apparently recovered from a downed extraterrestrial craft capable of interfacing with consciousness directly. When the device was turned on, strong toroidal fields of energy cycled about a pouch of water at the center, which acted as a sort of resonator for in-streaming energies from the point of focus maintained by the operator. The data was collected and projected onto video monitors at incredible speeds, which later needed to be deinterlaced to reveal discernible images. What's interesting is that the biases of the operator would have a direct effect on the images collected. For example, if one were to look back to the time of Jesus' crucifixion, if the person doing so was an atheist, they may not see anything at all. But if the person was a Christian, they may see the infamous crucifixion event. This is suggestive of a time-space mechanic in the universe, wherein the human mind is able to navigate through time itself. The work of Dewey B. Larson and his reciprocal systems theory provides the basis for this interpretation. Briefly, as described by Larson, the universe is broken up into two physical regions, as defined by motion. Below the speed of light, motion operates in three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. Above the speed of light, motion operates in one dimension of space and three dimensions of time. As bizarre as that sounds, the mind is uniquely equipped to navigate in time, which is able to access memories of the past, gain awareness of events in the present, conceive of future possibilities, and even imagine alternative events that did not actually happen. In other words, the human mind can select the point of focus just like in remote viewing, and receive the information from the store of memories made during the experience. Do you know the difference between looking glass and the yellow cube? Yes. 
Okay. Are you aware of what happened to the yellow cube and how it was used and, um, and so on? Are you... I, I believe that the yellow cube still exists. I can't say for certain if it's on this planet, but I would say that it's definitely protected from use at this point. Okay, well that coincides with the testimony we got. The yellow cube or the yellow book would give you your possible future. Yes. So it took basically the choices that you would inherently make along a timeline and tell you what that timeline would be given that you made all the choices that your brain would make. Well, this is exactly what I was just going to ask you. What we were told is that leaders of, of governments and so on, people in high uh, places, uh, you know, uh, politically, would, would use this to try to see their most optimum future and then follow those, those so they were using it to enhance their wealth, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. yeah. in a very egotistical way. Um, and that was part of the problem with it. The looking glass device seems to be capable of the same type of process. To access a data stream from any conceivable location, in space or time, steered via the consciousness of an operator. According to the testimony of Burish, the technology was provided to the human race during the Sumerian times, when an advanced contingent of future humans went back in time and provided that civilization assistance after a cataclysm known as the Deluge. The Sumerian cylinder seals were encoded with plans to build the looking glass device. Earlier versions of the project saw the development of an actual portal that an individual could move through to jump in time. According to Burish, accounts provided by captured beings known in the program as P-45s, future humans 45,000 years into the future, the Earth was destroyed by massive cataclysms around the year 2012. This is apparently because looking glass devices were actively being used during a major celestial alignment, which overloaded the organic energy grid of the planet. Burish further claims that the device has been dismantled as a result of discovering two probable timelines, one of which is the cataclysm described by the captured being. An attempt was made to look into the future, but no concrete data was able to be received past the infamous date of December 21st, 2012. Suggesting that this date is a next back at that 2012 again, huh? Crazy, right? This point in time whereby either timeline one or timeline two would gain momentum. In the last report, Burish suggested that timeline one, the positive timeline, had an over 80% likelihood of coming to fruition. Given that we are nearly a decade beyond the 2012 date and no major cataclysms have occurred. We are most likely well entrenched within the positive timeline. This is undoubtedly one of the more intriguing topics in Awakening Times, which seems. I ain't gonna hold y'all. Y'all know I'm for that positive timeline thing for sure. You know, the other option wasn't a damn option. You feel me? Like, I ain't got time for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we wanna go out, just, just imagine, bro. Like, I don't wanna get swept away by no wave. I'm cool on all of that. I'm good on the ground, eating my ass. Like, I don't... Hold on, pause. The ground... You can't even say the ground swallowing me. Uh, me falling into the ground, the ground smushing me. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I, I ain't for none of that. You know, volcanoes and landslides. I'm good, bro. I, I, I can pass on that. So hopefully, you know, uh, y'all think we on that, on that good path for sure? I think I think I think we've been we've been doing good with navigating around all the bullshit lately though. You know what I'm saying? That's why we congregate on this channel. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Let's keep getting it. Let me know how y'all feel in the comments down below though. Seems to be well hidden in popular works of fiction. Corey Good, a secret space program insider, claims to have reviewed documentation relating to this project. It would be very hard to accept that all of this information that, that is currently held secret and classified. Damn, Nat try to violate me. Try to fly my nostril. Icky. I smell something. Fucking fishy. Why is this page gone? Hmm. TikTok, what is this page? Oh, I don't know. I was just trying to read the article about 2023 trafficking in persons report from Sri on West Bank, Gaza. <laughs> There's nothing bigger, major. So that, so that last clip, 
See, they were trying to figure out what's the possible futures, what we talked about before. But ultimately, uh, you know, they, 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 they stopped it because it was only so much that you can do. It was always this incident, this, this event that was going to happen. But, you know, that's why I asked that question. Which timeline do y'all think we're in? I think we're in a positive one, man. Till we see a wave sweep across this bitch, we good. I was trying to read or anything like that. And what's totally wild to me is y'all are having conferences over there that you're not telling America about where you guys are literally collecting organs and putting them into soldiers. But they're not the organs of your people, they're organs of the freaking Palestinian people. Like, wow. And then if you go reading back all the way to like 2009, where Israel was literally caught harvesting people's organs from people who had already unalived, but specifically, once again, the Palestinian people, that's nuts. And then you put in perspective that the United States is Israel, and we have this problem too. We got this organ traffic problem again over here, and we got this traffic in the kids problem over here, and it's really cool if you got the same problem in the same fucking country across the world. And then and over here in the United States, we had oil spills, tornadoes, freaking floods, fires freaking what else missing ammonium nitrate hey guys somebody just broke in and stole 400 guns from the ES and then what was it 400 pounds of explosives y'all got a lot of weird fishing going on with humans that we can't find after the fact and now you're looking me in my face and telling me that we're having a war about land right now about the same land that was given to the Rothschilds by the Church of England Ironically, we're fighting over that place because people were displaced from another place, but we only talk about one group of people displaced from that place. Back to Israel. Israel, you're doing a lot of shady shit for y'all not to even be the true Israelis. You're doing a lot. And U.S. media, you're doing even fucking more, okay? Because there's no reason that this article should be missing. There's absolutely none. Unless it wasn't a war about religion or land and it was actually true, just a war, I don't know, to get rid of people. Now I have to think... That concentration camp in Palestine, where 50% of them are children. Wow, okay, well, if you had literally a fishbowl where you were creating, I don't know, you were breeding people. And you yeah, think about this. Th listen to it real closely. We were just using them because there were no international laws to protect them. That would be crazy. And now you got to co cover up all your tracks by creating a war. We all agree this war, and this ain't a normal war. This whole war has been cheap as fuck. You got propaganda, you got fake buildings, you got reporters out there lying. I'm gonna be honest with you, some of these videos of these parents and these children crying, I don't mean to be insensitive, but I'm gonna tell you, I've seen a crisis after a day or two before in my life, and some of them is paid, okay? But yeah, Israel, we gonna look into your harvesting problem organs. I find it intriguing. This is a time that everyone needs to be aware of and everybody needs to know the truth. There's a reason they're censoring everything, because they don't want you to know the truth. I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm not here to put words in your mouth. I'm not here to put thoughts in your head. I'm only here to show you what you can see with your own eyes and then let you decide what you think. That's the machine right there that they use to, you know, do all the tunnels and stuff like that, you know. And but these a lot of these tunnels been here before they started doing this again. But you got to think they moved all the food, all the other stuff down there and they've been planning for an event that they seen in the looking glass. So there's, it's probably more than likely they're planning for both of the, the events and to take advantage of both. That's just my thoughts. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments down below. Let's keep going. a raven rock to me, like what it is, what it's for. No. Raven Rock, like Area 51, remains one of the U.S. government's most classified installations. It's all part of a plan that was hatched 70 years ago. In the 1950s, the government came up with plans for a deep underground command center where the president and, you know, a few hundred staff members not only could take shelter, but also could direct a nuclear war. 
The plan is called Continuity of Government, or COG. At any moment, we could see thousands of members of the government completely wiped out, but there's a secondary government, a shadow government that is ready to take over at a moment's notice. Raven Rock is an underground backup Pentagon. It's the most unbelievable place you can imagine. You're 768 feet below the surface. Don Camel spent three and a half years at Raven Rock as part of the president's communication team. He's never spoken on camera before about his time working in the secret bunker. Basically, they carved out a city underground that could survive a direct hit from a nuclear blast. After you go through the security, you walk in and it's basically an underground tunnel. There's a blast door that was three and a half foot thick that weighed 30 tons. Uh, you go through like an airlock and they have two of those doors and then you walk another uh, half a mile. A half mile deeper into the mountain is the bunker itself. And you're going past five buildings. Those represent the five rings of the Pentagon. And each of those buildings are three stories tall and they probably have 50 to 80 offices per floor. The Dolce Subterranean Base. This seven-story compound is said to be the site of horrific genetic experimentation on human-alien hybrids and cutting-edge technologies beyond imagination. Level 1 serves as both the security checkpoint and communications office, where government personnel manage access and interact with potential extraterrestrial contacts. At Level 2, sprawling living quarters provide shelter solely for human personnel. Level 3 of the underground facility contains executive offices and alien science labs where enigmatic experiments challenge the boundaries of human understanding of extraterrestrial technology. On level four, disturbing mind control experiments are allegedly conducted, delving into the dark realms of manipulating consciousness and human behavior within the shadowy depths. Level five is said to house alien living quarters. Several extraterrestrial species coexist within the depths of the underground base. At level six, disturbing genetic experiments are allegedly conducted delving into the boundaries of biological manipulation. At level seven, rumors speak of cryogenic storage chambers where chilling mysteries lie frozen. Talk about an advanced network of tunnel systems which are basically underground alien bases that are controlled by Luciferian technicians and draconians. But what you gotta understand is, is that these underground facilities work in synergy with the 269 Walmarts that got closed down because they're basically gateways that lead to the Denver airport. So when you have a post ship, there's mass calamity on the surface of the planet to where the governmental elite, the oligarchs and the aristocracy gotta hide in these tunnel systems in order to escape judgment. Now these underground alien uh, bases are basically station points for many different Mount Neville and extraterrestrial species that come to this planet for experimentation and for extermination when you're talking about eugenics and depopulation. Now, what you gotta also gotta understand is book of Daniel and you take out all the vowels and you translate it in ancient Hebrew and you read it backwards it tells you that there's an intergalactic gateway inside the planet that leads you to a subterranean kingdom when you're talking about hollow earth and uh, the city of Shambhal many different ley lines on the planet many of that they're basically energy centers because they contain concentric interstellar vortex portals that basically take you to the moon because the draconians uh, built the moon as a draconian mothership on planet Jupiter, looking at so, as many different maps that basically coincide with the underground tunnels. Yes, every 40 seconds a child goes missing. I know y'all don't know me, but I've been on this conscious journey for a while. I've been seeking information for so long. This is what I posted on my Instagram just 41 weeks ago. But um, as you can see, look at the US trafficking hotspots up here, honey, and look at where the underground tunnels be, snatching their asses up, going straight on, on the bottom of the ground. Like that is just crazy, right? Not a coincidence either. Think about it. In I mean, the math just be mathing sometimes. It just be set up like that. I ain't saying it is what it looked like, but it looked like what it is, right? Like, shit. Legal underground bunker was just found in Yakima, Washington, while searching for missing five-year-old Lucian Mungia. Lucian disappeared from Sarge Hubbard Park on September 10th of this year, and if you need more information about this, go look at my previous video about him down below. Lucian's family received a tip that he was being held in an underground bunker somewhere near the park. 
And when his dad, Juan, and other searchers investigated that tip, it led them to this bunker between Keys Road and the Yakima River on a remote lot that's property of Yakima County. The area had previously been searched multiple times, but the entrance to the bunker was hidden beneath heavy layers of dirt and tree branches, making it really hard to find. The bunker is six feet deep, includes multiple rooms, a Crazy. propane hookup, and a heater. It's extremely creepy. According to Juan, they found nooses, weapons, scuba suits with holes cut out of the private areas, and a bunch of masks. So they took a bunch of photos and notified the Yakima Police Department. But even though the tip proved somewhat accurate, there was just no sign of Lucian there at all. This is the third illegal underground bunker found in Yakima this year, and they're all allegedly built by the same man, who's 61 years old and has been homeless in the area for years. This man was arrested in 2018 after police discovered another bunker of his in the Yakima Sportsman State Park. He pleaded guilty to second-degree malicious mischief and was sentenced to 90 days in jail, which is the max for that crime. According to court documents, this man has multiple previous convictions dating back to the 1980s, such as assault and lewd conduct. This is extremely concerning, considering he's choosing parks where little kids play at to build these underground bunkers on. And while there isn't any connection to Lucian yet, this should still be a PSA. Authorities are saying there really isn't much they can do besides issue an eviction and clean up the area, so beware. Lucian's family is offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to Lucian's safe return. It's coming up on two months now, and we really need to find Lucian. If you have any information regarding his disappearance, please call the Yakima Police Department at 509-575-6200. And if you notice too, is is what the a crazy part is, is like, bro, it's people out here that that a sell a rock to a person that they know what it is and they want to pay for it and they want to get high and destroy their lives. And but something can happen to a child and stuff like that. And it don't seem like uh when when these children get abused or hurt or touched or something like that, like the the consequences don't seem extreme. They should be extreme. The consequences should be very extreme. It's like people get more like like is it something that that's not being said out here? I don't know. Are we gonna get into that in this video? We gonna see. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that in the comments down below. It ain't the same energy for these children. Just like the children, you know, that's missing all over the world, you know. And then you you remember the clip of uh Donald Trump calling out Hillary for her taking the Haitian kids and stuff like that. And what's happening to them? Like that's why they're terrified of him. That's why they want to destroy him in the public in front of everybody like the way they're doing. Like, it's crazy. But look, we're going to continue in this video. I'm not saying it is what it is, but it looked like what it is sometimes. There are bunkers everywhere in this country. Nevertheless, their objective remains the total conquest of all the Earth. We're currently inside of the largest bunker in all of Switzerland. It is massive. I mean, look, these things is all over the world, and do y'all think they're connected? Look at this place. Think about it. 30,000 square meters of space, which is 300,000 square feet for those imperial people out there like me. And I'm hanging out with Eric, who currently owns the bunker. This is where the crew uh, was taking the showers. Uh, showering 85 meters of rock above you. Yeah, uh, it's got to be one of the deepest showers in the world. He's been showing me giant cannons and the sleeping quarters and the hospital and the giant generators that have provided electricity for this place. From the Why would you need that? Outside, this thing does not look big at all. <laughs> wow. Look at that. That is amazing. A reminder that every time you see a little door in the forest that goes into a bunker, it's probably a massive network of tunnels. Two meters of concrete here at the entrance. You go inside of this door and you are let into a labyrinth of tunnels and weaponry. Eight kilometers of walkways. Eight kilometers, yeah. Oh, and with the most gnarly doors you've ever seen in your life. They're quadruple fortified with 
huge slabs of concrete. This is like two meters of concrete. You sit behind there with a rifle and be able to protect the entrances. Yeah. Wow. No one is getting into this bunker anytime soon. I went to Switzerland to hunt for bunkers, fortresses drilled impossibly deep into mountains and cliffs and villages, hidden from view, but packing deadly power. <laughs> wow. I've seen so Crazy. many bunkers. You don't have to look super hard to find them. They're everywhere. But there's a bunker right here. Look at this. This. Think about it. So they have a treaty in Antarctica, you know, that they not going you know, blow the whole earth up and shit. It's a reason why they can work together, but then they can also go home and war with each other in front of the world. I think it's all basically a distraction or, you know, is it really going on the way that you think it's going on? But you never know what's really going on. I'm speaking like this today for a reason. Y'all let me know in the comments down below if you're tracking. But it is what it is. Why would you have to have these bunkers and all these weapons and all the food and stuff? What are you getting prepared for? I mean. I'm just asking for a friend. We are the first species on the face of this earth to be aware of evolution, to be aware that we are affecting our own evolution by everything that we do. The babies we eat, the food we eat, the car, wars we fight. We are the first species. I ain't never gonna get old right there. <laughs> but so, so it's made from human foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta amputate my hand and shit. You know what I'm saying? With a knife. Give me a butter. I don't care. You got butter knife? All right, cool. I'm with it. My hand gotta go. Now, for yourself on this one right here, I play the video, have uh, Alexa or, you know, Siri or somebody translate that for you or simply, you know, saying type it in, figure out how you got to figure out so you can really see for yourself. But let me know what y'all find in the comments down below. You can zoom in and do like a 3D and look at the city and everything. But my issue is that when you zoom out and you go into outer space, this earth that we live on turns into a cartoon. Right, right. This is a cartoon now. Where is the real earth? Oh, that's right. Space ain't a real place. That's why this camera doesn't go into outer space. In fact, I'm going to show you right now where these images come from. It's not that they wouldn't use the magical floating satellites if they could. It's that they don't physically exist, nor does the globe. They have been sending these up one at a time since it all began. I will allow them to explain it. It's also the genesis for NASA's newly developed super pressure balloon. The, whole, the reason for super pressure balloon is they have absolutely stable altitude, day night. And it doesn't matter how cold the atmosphere is. They are sealed. So your shape is always the same. You always displace the same amount of air, and therefore you have the same amount of buoyancy all the time. NASA has been using balloons for science research for over 30 years. The exploration that can be done on balloons is continuing to grow. The standard balloon that I fly is about 660 feet long when it's made. So let me get this straight. It is now public knowledge that they send up satellites on massive helium-filled balloons. As you should know, NASA is the largest consumer of helium in the world, for obvious reasons. But the issue with society is that they never critically think. Just think for a second here. If these are sent up to provide the world with all of the important information we need, and I'm sure the entire process is expensive and difficult to accomplish, then please explain to me what in the flat world do these pathetic animations do for you? Do they make you happy inside? 
Are they so super duper cool that you cannot see past the obvious CGI? The fact of the matter is everything NASA sends up on a balloon simply hovers above our motionless Earth. That is why they rarely speak about orbiting satellites, and of course, they never show footage. Here is some footage of a random evening with a man, the moon, and his Nikon P900. Notice anything floating up there? Hey, motherfucker, they look like Santa Claus, don't they? That's where Santa Claus came from. That's where the story came from, like that. <laughs> Forget it, Bart. It's so bright out, you can't see anything in the sky except the Fox satellite. Crazy. Then every now and then, these satellites come crashing down. They fall out of the sky with those helium balloons attached to them all over the world. But you don't hear about it because you likely get your information from mainstream media. And I'm going to tell you why that's a bad idea. The same people that own the news are the same people that are perpetuating this hoax, all right? If you want the truth, you got to find it yourself. For you. Because how? How did I get back on? Now listen, I got to go down a rabbit hole because I can have found out some more stuff that I got a question about. I know I ain't saying any more questions, but I got to Real quick. <laughs> it's like that sometimes. That's supposed to be Neil Foot, but this is the bottom of the shoe. I ain't no rocket scientist, but hold up, let's look again. Bottom of the shoe here, footprint there. Mm. So child, that ain't even what got me. Let me let me tell y'all what got. Me. When it's asked why the footprint on the bottom of the space suit that's on display is different than the footprint that's on the darn moon, they say, oh. Because they had so many moon rocks they had to bring back that Neil decided to take his shoes off and leave them to compensate for the weight. Now that's how I know good dog on well. These astronauts they went on to the moon and LID had no home training and took their shoes off and left. In a spacesuit, 11 layers thick, that weigh 180 pounds on Earth and 30 pounds on the moon. How, how you get the boots off, Neil? How you get them off? Would you do like a little heel toe? Because I know you ain't bend over it. That was the outfit you had on when you took your boots off. <laughs> mm. Or maybe he threw them out the window when they were pulling off chat. Now listen, apparently while all of this was going down on the moon, Michael Collins was orbiting the moon for 21 hours, Thank about you, 60 miles away from the surface of the moon. And apparently when he got on the dark side of the moon, none of the communication worked. So honey, by the grace of God, Buzz and Neil got back on in the Eagle and did a little so they mosey on up about 60 miles and they run into the club. That's the other part of the ship, right? And I guess they connected like the auto box. And then Michael <laughs> drove them on home track. I don't know, friends. Maybe put that thing in fifth gear was like, womp, womp. And then once they got to Earth's atmosphere, they had to turn around and bet that thing up so that the heat shield can prevent them being burned up because they was entering the Earth's atmosphere at 24,000 miles an hour. But don't worry, they had parachutes that stopped them before they hit the ocean. And they landed fast, put out a beacon, and then the ships came. And there you have it. He's... Then I want to know, after that, what happened to the darn eagle? You know, the other part of the space. Child, they say the eagle is still in orbit around the moon. Now, I'm just going to let y'all know. And I don't want y'all to get jealous and don't go tell nobody because I know if it get back to me, y'all the ones that told because I'm the only one that told y'all. I got a Samsung Galaxy. Don't get mad. Don't get I will put y'all on my plan, but I don't know if you're going to pay your part of the bill. But I'm saying that because mm -hmm. I done zoomed in on the moon plenty of times and I ain't seen no spaceship float around the moon. Now, they done left furniture, cameras. Shoes, apparently, a flag, and they say about 400,000 pounds of trash material from us. I ain't seen none of it. Now, friends, look, I don't know if they would or not. I, I'm not an astronaut. I was going to be an astronaut, but I decided to let them have that. I didn't want to steal that. If I can convince you that you are here by chance and that you just happen to explode from outer space into this go to lock zone, then I can convince you that you are nothing, right? But if you knew that you were here on purpose and your life had so much meaning, then you probably wouldn't let people control you, right? Because outside of them, there is a higher power that put us here. And I don't think he designed it for us to leave. This. The Terminator is the prequels to or the beginning of the Matrix. Sarah Connor is actually Neo's mother. So JC, John Connors, Jesus Christ goes up to being Neo, one and the same in the Matrix. The Matrix is in the future. The Terminator is the past. It's time travel, past, present, and future time travel. It's the second coming of the Christ the evolutions of consciousness, man versus the machine. So the machines, the Terminator machines, hear that a child is gonna be born that's gonna terminate them in the future when they oppress man. Because see, it's a man versus the machine. It's God's children versus man's children, which was technology. So man versus nature. Exactly. 
So the Terminator has to time travel to the past because they know it's Sarah Connor and they have to kill her, terminate her, so she won't have the baby. And Kyle Reese, he comes from the future to protect her and he invertly gets her pregnant and he has to go back to the future. And so it's the Immaculate Conception because now she's pregnant and she fell in love with a man, but did it really happen? Did he exist? And then this child, when you see the three Terminators, the, the, the boy and then the man child, subconsciously he doesn't know why the Terminator is trying to kill him until he's hidden out in the city, in the Matrix, the future. When he reaches 30 years of age, the rebellion, the reloaded, revolution starts. And the rebels come and they find him because they've been watching him all along. That's what the Guardians and the Sentinels are all about. And so mm. they wake him up to his purpose. They take him to Morpheus to train him to fight the machines. They take him to the Oracle because of the prophecy. So this is the whole epic story. It's an epic. Because this plays into it's crazy. why this sudden, home. this sudden mental change on Facebook. Where is Facebook now a threat where they need to regulate them and shut them down? Facebook is nothing but a database for the CIA. That's all it is. It has all of your family's pictures, all of your friends. It has all the information. They used it here. Like an Ancestry.com. I'm telling you, like that. that's just crazy, right? In Vegas, when they had that car accident, Remember when the Maserati right by the Cromwell, yes, when yes. that happened mm -hmm. right there? Well, all they did was take camera footage from uh, Caesars, Bally's, and you know, other uh, casinos. And they went and they took this footage and they got the license plates. And then they saw that the guy did, you know, California, he rented that uh, Range Rover. And after they did that, they went to social network and they found his girlfriend on Twitter and so they found his picture. And then they went to LA, because they knew they were from LA, put his uh, picture on a $250,000 billboard and put a reward up for him for $25,000. And they got him within two weeks. Within two weeks because of the technology. So how should we, how do you advise people to share the image, well, the data? There's not going to be any more privacy. Everything is camera down. Everything is caught on camera. And this is what is going to be about in the future, virtual reality that I'm explaining in The Matrix and Terminator. Everything is going to be, so now it's going to be so easy. You're, you're not going to have any more paper passports. It's just going to be where you come into the airport, they're going to scan you, your body, retinal, fingerprints, the whole nine yards. This is what clears the body. We're That's right. The airport. That's and what yeah. this way, nobody has to alter paper and put a picture or a name on there because they have your bone structure, they have your eyes, they got your fingerprints. This is the database and they match you up. You see what I'm saying? And you go through. So that way no terrorists can come through and pretend to be somebody or or somebody that they're looking for that's the most wanted. You see what I'm saying? Because all of this technology is going to start ruling. It's artificial intelligence. It's going to start ruling everything. Once the satellites come into play that I'm talking about, there's maybe another five to ten years from now, they're really going to play uh, a phenomenal part. Because this is why Apple and Microsoft became the billion dollar, trillion dollar babies is because IBM and Xerox didn't know what a mouse was. A mouse meaning they didn't know what the internet was going to be. You see what I'm talking about? They didn't want to move into that technology. The studios don't know what streaming is. They got pissed off because Netflix paid $50 million and got three or four Oscars for the movie Roma but it was never shown in the movie theaters at all. It was watched. And that's why Steven Spielberg and all of it. You know, when we come back, yes. I, I'm gonna have uh, some of my crew to join you, my technical people, the superhero. Ask. We mentioned when you were coming on, your lawsuits and the battles you've had to fight and you've just won in Utah. Yes. But it's always a battle for you. Well, the reason why it's always a battle for me is because the government refuses to protect my copyrights. You know, I own the copyrights to all the derivative movies, 
the friend, both franchises I own, it was adjudicated in Utah, September the 25th, 20. And, 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 and look, most of us did not know this was going on for everybody's most people's like a lot of people's favorite movies like Matrix and stuff like that. Terminator. Come on now. We all here on this channel. Look, I know we watched it. If anybody watched it, we watched it. OK. It's crazy that this is that, that this would even happen, but it's not. It's it, what's even more daunting about it is that. We've seen this at the, the, the highest level. Now they want to scam people and be able to use you like your AI version of you for like movies and stuff. Like you see what they're trying to do. They're trying to excess out of the situation completely. These people are trying to run up the money and keep you oppressed. It don't matter about your skin color, your background, none of that. It's a few people that's doing this to the whole. And how do we let this happen? We need to try up for show. Sure. 14. So why am I still with a RICO case here in Nevada, which I just won, but they're still trying to fix it so they can continue to use the stolen money, which is untraceable Crazy. and it's all linked to Hillary Clinton's foundation and money laundering. Do you consider yourself politically neutral? I consider myself totally neutral. All I'm worried about is for the people. Right. Because if the government doesn't protect my copyrights, he doesn't protect yours. But the government afraid, is afraid of you. I'd be afraid of you. Well, there's no need to be afraid of me because well, I only stand for principles. But, you know, but what you know and the knowledge you share hey. and what you have insights to can be very dangerous to some people. Yes, but my job is to come here and waken people. And that's what the Matrix is about, to wake you up from the Matrix, to get you out of the illusions and the lies and the ignorance. Right. So it's not dangerous for me because that's my job. That's what I came here to do. That's why I wrote The Matrix and Terminator to wake people up so they can move on to greater, better things. Yeah, but a lot right. of these movie houses and these studios and the Facebooks of the world don't want people to know what happens to them every day when they share the information. But that's destroying their free will. But and do God you think, doesn't want that. But people, people want to play, want to be ignorant. They don't want to know that they're being exploited. It requires too much responsibility when they it's find true. out. Well, that's what the blue, the blue pill and the red pill is about. The red pill is about the blood of the living beings. The black and the blue ink is the machines. But this is the, the human's world. We are the winners. They are the losers. So people need to exert their free will regardless of what anybody wants. So what are the unintended consequences of all this that we're talking about? Their people's consciousness will shift and they will go on to create and do better things. They won't be in bondage. And this is the whole purpose of the Matrix and Terminator and the new work that's coming, Matrix 4. It's a Matrix 4 book is out, it's been selling for nine years since 2010 around the entire globe people have to wake up and shift their consciousness so they can create so they can build because you can't stay in the past everything must change right one of the things in the one minute that we have left if you don't remember anything else about the broadcast today is this you're not as free as you think you are you're in bondage in more ways than you imagine and it's a different kind of slavery, very dangerous kind of slavery that the mind and how we concede ourselves to people without any thought, or any challenge, and we're so willing to surrender. Freedom comes with a price. It takes as much to maintain it as it did to establish it. It's not really free, and it's but, not for the faint of heart. But man is always going to take that challenge because man wants to be free. Look, everybody loved The Matrix and Terminator because it woke them up. They didn't even realize they were in the dream. They didn't realize they were in a simulation. They didn't realize they were in the illusions. But now that they are awakened, they will fight. Will you fight? Are you awakened? Are you ready to embrace your destiny? Because freedom comes from God, not from man. And the moment you realize that, you'll begin that journey of freedom. Thank you so much. I want to say one thing, like Morpheus said, I didn't tell you it was going to be easy. But it will be fair if you fight the So Let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. You're not human, are you? Well, it's tough to get any more obvious than that. If I had to guess, I'd say you were programmed from the machine world. 
so is he. So far, so good. But if that's true, that could mean you are part of this system. Another kind of control. Keep going. I suppose the most obvious question is, how can I trust you? Bingo. It is a pickle, no doubt about it. Bad news is there's no way if you can really know whether I'm here to help you or not. So it's really up to you. Just have to make up your own damn mind to either accept what I'm going to tell you or reject it. Candy? You already know if I'm going to take it? Wouldn't be much of an oracle if I didn't. But if you already know, how can I make a choice? Because you didn't come here to make the choice. You've already made it. You're here to try to understand why you made it. I thought you'd have figured that out by now. Why are you here? Same reason. I love candy. But why help us? We're all here to do what we're all here to do. I'm interested in one thing, Neo, the future. And believe me, I know, the only way to get there is together. Are there other programs like you? Oh, not like me, but... Look, see those birds? At some point, a program was written to govern them. A program was written to watch over the trees and the wind, sunrise and sunset. That program's running all over the place. The ones doing their job, doing what they were meant to do, are invisible. You never even know they were here. But the other ones, well, you hear about them all the time. I've never heard. Of course you have. Every time you've heard someone say they saw a ghost or an angel. Every story you've ever heard about vampires, werewolves, or aliens is the system assimilating some program that's doing something they're not supposed to be doing. I don't know what happens when you go down the conspiracy theory rabbit holes. You find out some stuff that's really grieving. They've had free electricity for over a hundred years and haven't told people because they've suppressed it. They've, the government has literally captured the patents so that other people can't reproduce it. <laughs> it's, it's that bad. Once you learn the political corruption, you start going, well, what else? It never ends. Like if you knew that there's medicine that doesn't have side effects that can actually heal you, you would no longer be a customer. If you knew that there's free electricity, you would no longer be a customer. If you knew that certain foods are poisoning you and causing you to get on the hamster wheel of needing medication that doesn't actually heal you, that you would no longer be a customer. Everything is about sucking stuff out of you. You know the movie The Matrix where everybody's hooked up to the thing, bro? Like, I'm not trying to be crazy. I'm not trying to be crazy, bro, but like, it is kind of like that. Like, the more I look, it's everywhere, bro. Once you start to see the fence around you everywhere that they've built so that you can only go so far, you start to realize that it truly is a prison planet. It really is, and they're attempting to push it even further. That's why there's a war on information. They, they don't want the free exchange of ideas because that threatens their stranglehold on your dependence on them. Anyway, have a great conspiracy Friday or whatever today is. And then the whole see a UFO, bro, and that shit start moving. And look, y'all see the chemtrails in the sky and shit, right? Bro, they're trying to cover the sky up, yo. Because look, last night my friend had sent me a video. Y'all gotta watch that. Pete, shit. this is serious. Pay attention. There's some shit going on. Look, he just sent me this shit. This from this down Miami. I see it. It's right there. This is what I just seen today, bro. Right there.
And then it could also be, uh, like they said, in the war zones and stuff like this. I showed this clip right here before, but it's matching. The, 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 the math is mathing. They keep spraying. Like, I know they spray it here a lot today. And, and they start off with the X's, and then they have also have the high-speed uh, planes that you can't see. the. You can't even see the plane. It's just look, look, look like a line disappearing in the sky. I mean, have y'all been noticing a lot of those in y'all area lately? Let me know and let me know where y'all from, like where y'all been seeing it at. This is how we communicate. The way is uh, we're doing Hamas has uh, carried out attacks and captured the Israelis, of course, perhaps the one that most viewers recognize, Gil, actually, the Israeli soldier that was taken in a cross border raid and brought into Gaza. They kept him in a location that very few Hamas people or militants knew about. And in fact, that's what complicated the negotiations. The cell that was responsible for taking him kept him in, uh, on the move constantly and so that no group of people that is taken now and that was live that was live there are extraterrestrial races upon us some of them work in tls some of them i know of that work in dls from different planets that exist today some of them look like human beings some of them don't and their purpose overall is to reach what you and i spoke about a different time called the age of life which is a different era a different awareness collectively it's, it's a collective awareness that will pretty much lead us to live in a completely different world a world without borders without walls it's there's no separate anything we're we're one and beyond there's no americans and chinese people there's earthlings right and beyond just that we live in a universe so for us to reach our collective destiny collective doesn't just mean collective upon the human race collective destiny of the age of love means collective upon all life remember that heart chakra in the beginning of the video look it all comes for the circle people and if we don't reach that then even though the ets are at a much higher level of awareness than we are we will not collectively reach what we need to reach so part of their from my understanding, motivation for being here and for working on Earth today is to help us together reach our collective awareness of all life in the universe. Where are they based, Jason, generally? Where are they all based, this TLS group? All over the world. You, uh, there are offices in New York City. You just won't see TLS. You'll see covers. Everything's okay. a cover. They're a cover. But they do have a, a major branch in every city in the world. Every major city. The Pyramid Code document, is it available to the general public? Yes. So on September 9th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is New York time, I was instructed to release the document. It's on my website, jasonsherka.com. Um, I think at this point, if I'm not mistaken, there's seven or eight different languages that it's been translated into because people have been taking incredible initiatives to work together and come What's together. What's the reaction to it? Incredible. Don't get me wrong, there are those that maybe want to put me in a mental asylum. And really? Yeah. Yeah, my family being one of them. It's Tell not me about that. They just don't believe you? It's not that. Well, look what we have here, though, know, people. Look, let me know how y'all feel about that video in the comments down below. Like, you got to think. You know, that's why I think it's important for everybody to step inside, you know, and really pay attention to what's going on around them. Not to say that everything you see on these videos are true, but you have to look these things up for yourself. I don't want to force feed people. But with that being said, when we continue to raise our consciousness and our vibrations together, don't think about this as a competition with somebody else, you know, because you're going to find something for you, right? And you're going to tap into that person without even trying. Things are going to come to you. You're going to become that magnet. You're going to be breaking that matrix. And the things that you attract and that you really want, you will start to understand how to control who you are and your destiny for you. Your path is going to be completely different than somebody else's. So, you know, we got to stop that comparing and, you know, boasting around like, nah, we are all powerful. And, you know. We're learning a little bit more and more every day in a way that's going to help us from, you know, uh, 
this 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 helps on so many different levels like the people that can't talk about aliens and stuff with the with your friend group that you're around because they don't want to talk about that shit at all they want to talk about turning up going to the club you know what i'm saying uh spending all their money going on trips that they could show on instagram uh and make it seem like they got more than what they have we should be past that point of our lives you know what i'm saying well the majority of us if you're in your 20s man enjoy your time have fun you know but i would say this you know for people more around my age we got to be doing better you know like meeting up at your friend's houses to have drinks and stuff like this all the time now nah, we need to be focused on setting you and your family up for the future and what's to come you know what i'm saying but look i said enough on this video i appreciate y'all for tuning in tribe up merch dropping soon music dropping soon i appreciate y'all for rocking with me and sharing these positive vibes let's spread these videos all over the internet let's continue our thing and i appreciate y'all like i always say spread love because there's too much hate in this world love you guys see you on the next video and i'm out though Laugh.